Hey guys, what's up? I apologize that it's been a while since my last upload. I have been quite busy with helping out a friend move and also been working on another big ranking project that should come out within the next week or so. In the meantime, I wanted to at least give a brief update while also providing another quick review on the line. And I figure I'll kill two birds with one stone by quickly giving my thoughts on two big movies I saw this past weekend. The first of which I'll be talking about is the new Pixar film, Luca. At this point, Pixar doesn't really need an introduction when it comes to what they are in the animation industry. I had been curious about what this decade will offer since for some, the 2010s was the start of Pixar's downfall, with many claiming that their films haven't been as good. If you ask me, however, while I don't think movies of the past decade were as great as some of their classics, I still think Pixar can provide us with some really excellent stuff considering we still got a lot of really great movies from them despite some misfires. With 2020 starting off relatively well for them, with Onward being pretty decent and Soul being excellent, it was only a matter of time to see if Luca would be another movie to show how promising this decade will potentially be for the animation studio. Thankfully, Luca ended up being pretty great. As far as comparisons to other Pixar films, Luca is a little more unique when it comes to what kind of movie it is. It is still basic Pixar setup with it being a buddy movie of two friends going on whatever random adventure they have in store. But it also takes from other animation studios as this also has a feel of both a classic Disney animated movie and a Ghibli movie. Many will compare it to Ghibli because this movie doesn't really have much tension in it and instead feels more like we're hanging out with these characters in a slice of life sort of story. There is a little bit more conflict than the average Ghibli movie with an antagonist and some more stakes in this story, but Luca isn't fixated on being a straightforward narrative with the conflict being majorly in the way. While it is similar to Ghibli, I also compare it to classic Disney animation as even with their older movies, when they had a conflict, they still managed to have a go with the flow kind of vibe and have the major conflict appear in the film be secondary to the characters interacting and learning about one another on their own time. So it manages to be a good mesh of these three studio films. And also like Disney and classic Ghibli movies, Luca isn't afraid to just have moments where the animation just speaks for itself. There are plenty of moments that are comparable more so to classic Disney and Ghibli than Pixar, where there's not so much a story reason for these characters to be in visually interesting set pieces, but it works well due to the visual flair and how it all communicates really well to what the characters are feeling. While we're at it, this is a beautiful looking movie with the backgrounds looking so authentic to Italian culture and the character design being a lot more stylistic than what we're used to from the studio. I said it before, but now after watching this movie, I'm still confused to why Disney only released it on Disney Plus and not in theaters. Maybe it's due to the film not being as conflict heavy, but the movie is impressive enough to where it's worth seeing on the big screen if you ask me. Still doesn't make any sense why Disney felt that their bad live action remakes are more theatrical appropriate than a movie with actual artistic merit to it. Yeah, I'm still not seeing this by the way. While I do love the visuals and the overall vibe the film has, I think it's also a really nice character movie. This movie is centered on the friendship between two young boys and the film does a great job of making their relationship believable. It is a film very fixated on showcasing the dynamic between Luca and Alberto without being super reliant on exposition. The film gives us time to really understand these characters and how these two characters like Luca and Alberto can become good friends and what kind of situations they can get themselves into as well. It's very common for Pixar to make movies about the strong bond between two friends, but I think thanks to this movie's laid back tone making us more focus on the duo and their little adventure, it makes it feel a lot stronger than the average Pixar movie with this kind of setup. Plus the movie also has a really subtle and poignant message about prejudice by making us aware that even with those who aren't accepting, there will always be those who are. And those are the kind of people that you should keep in your life and making it a pretty good film for kids when it comes to the moral department. If I had to name some complaints, there is sort of an antagonist here and he's okay but I can see the movie working pretty well without him if I'm being honest. The character I can compare him best to is Skinner from Ratatouille where he works 
works well for the story, but he comes across as kind of a cliche standard bad guy that doesn't really have much to him outside of him being a jerk. Though, he's not quite as memorable as Skinner if you ask me. He's more of the typical jerk character that doesn't seem to have much to him than that. And also, it might be just me, but he also kind of looks like someone who could be in Jimmy Neutron. He doesn't ruin the movie, but considering that this movie is trying to aim more for a chill, relaxing Pixar movie vibe, I could see this character feeling unneeded by others. Outside of that though, I think Luca is really great as this is the kind of Pixar animated movie I look for with it being still a quality animated film from them. But it also managed to be a little bit more with how it differentiates from other movies from the studios. I'm hoping this is another film that will set a precedent of what we can expect from Pixar animation this decade because as of now, they seem to be on a roll with it. If you have Disney+, Plus, definitely be sure to check Luca out when you get the chance. And I'm going to give Luca a 9 out of 10. The other major movie I saw over the weekend was The Sparks Brothers. This is a movie I was really interested in, namely for one reason, as this is the first documentary from filmmaker Edgar Wright. If you're unfamiliar with his work, he has directed the Cornetto Trilogy, Baby Driver, and a little gem of a movie that you might have heard of known as uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. So if it hasn't been clear by now, Edgar Wright is easily my all-time favorite movie director. And I think 2021 is doing a good job compensating for 2020 by giving us not one, but two films from Wright this year. The first of them is an interesting project as this is the first documentary feature from Wright. And me being such a big fan of his work, I was curious to see what he could do for the medium of a documentary. Unsurprisingly, he managed to bring something pretty great. If you're unfamiliar with the topic, this is a documentary about the famous cult band known as Sparks. A band that had consistently contained two brothers known as Ron and Russell Mao. They're one of those bands that never received any mainstream recognition, but as the documentary tells, they are one of those bands that many who are hardcore into music really adore and appreciate. Sparks is a band that managed to influence later trends in music and still managed to consistently make interesting unique albums to this day. This documentary really emphasizes that aspects of their career as we witness countless interviews from both people who have worked with them and famous artists like Weird Al and Beck explaining how Sparks were so influential. We get a sense that this is as much a love letter tribute to Sparks, with so many fans involved with this project, including Edgar Wright himself. Not only that, but this documentary managed to be a little bit more visually interesting with some great use of editing that flows perfectly with Sparks' music, along with some really enticing animation segments that help emphasize some of the events that occurs throughout Sparks' life. Anyone who is familiar with Edgar Wright's filmography knows that music tends to play a huge part in his films. So it's fitting that the first documentary feature from him is centered around music and fortunately really helps caters to his talents as a filmmaker. For people who are already a fan of Sparks, I'm sure you'll appreciate how they managed to take advantage of the documentary medium as opposed to it just being a standard documentary. If you haven't been exposed to them that much like I have, you can still be engaged throughout through how they showcase Sparks' career thanks to the talented filmmaking at hand here. If I had to say one minor complaint about it is that this movie does feel a little long. It might be a personal preference since I'm mostly used to documentaries being more around 90 minutes, but this film is close to two and a half hours long, so it's a bit longer than your typical documentary. There's a lot of information about Sparks, so it's a bit justifiable for the length, though I felt like it could have been condensed to a bit of a shorter movie as it does go on a little longer than expected. Other than that, I highly recommend seeing the Sparks Brothers if you're able to. It's an engaging, energetic documentary that really highlights an incredible career of one of the most underrated bands out there from a director I highly admire. This makes me not only more excited to see Last Night in Shoho now, but also made me more interested in witnessing some great music from two very unique individuals with a knack for music. I'm gonna give The Sparks Brothers a 9 out of 10. Both movies are great, definitely check them out when you get the chance, and I'll see you next time folks. Peace out. This is totally big enough for the both of us. <laughs> <laughs>